motherfucker. You're going to die. Yo, what up YouTube, Grow420Guide here, and welcome back to another episode of Season 2. For today's installment, we will be covering spider mites, my first encounter with them in my garden, and some information about these nasty little pests. So hopefully you can prevent yourself from getting an infestation, or at least know how to take care of the problem for future encounters. Let's not waste any time and hop right into this tutorial. The most common type of spider mite, and the one we're going to be focusing on in this video, is a two-spotted spider mite. Although, there are a couple other common types of spider mites, such as the Pacific spider mite and the strawberry spider mite. Spider mites come from a group of arachnids that contain mites and ticks, including roughly 1,200 species. Dr. Doom's spider mite knockout features a high concentration of a naturally occurring insecticide, pyrethrin, a vicious water insoluble liquid extracted from pyrethrum flowers, a very effective substance used to control aphids, spider mites, white flies, leaf hoppers, Japanese beetles, and more. Powerful spray can be used indoors and out, and is safe to apply on food crops up to one day before harvest. Keep in mind, cannabis differs from food crops in the sense you do not wash your flour before you consume it. So to be safe, I would not use once the two weeks of flush have began. When applying your spray, be sure to turn off all fans and raise your light source as high as you can at a range of any mist sprays. Also, make sure you apply once the lights have turned off for the night. If you are growing outdoors, apply in the early morning or late evening when the air is still, treating all foliage with particular attention to the undersides of leaves. By bombing my tent and floor today, along with the air ducts in each individual plant, I will wait another four days before I rebomb my plants in tent with the Dr. Doom spider mite knockout spray I use. By waiting four days, you are giving the pre-existing eggs time to hatch, but eliminating the newly hatched spider mites' chances at laying their own set of new eggs. Spider mites injure leaves by piercing cells and sucking out cell content. This injury produces a white or yellowish spot, sometimes called stipling. A small number of mites usually is not a reason for concern, although if you do not get a handle on the small number, they will quickly multiply into a colony. As colonies grow, injury intensifies. Spider mites have a straightforward life cycle, progressing through three stages between egg and adult. Temperatures play a huge factor in egg development. Temps hotter than 90 degrees Fahrenheit speed up reproduction, whereas cooler temperatures slow down the reproductive rate. What was that, YouTube? What causes spider mites? Good question, tubers. Well, more than often, dusty conditions lead to mite outbreaks. You can prevent this by vacuuming the grow room floor occasionally wiping down the walls with a damp cloth. Don't forget to dust your light fixtures or hoods. And last but not least, be sure to regularly clean your fans and ducts. Those areas are melting pots for dust bunnies of all shapes and sizes. That is all I got for you guys for the spider mite video. I hope it was informational for you guys and I hope you guys liked it. And until next time YouTube, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like and as always, subscribe YouTube and stay high. And I'll I'll see you soon because I got a lot more videos to, to keep pumping out. Peace.